Hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Kevin Cole from Zerto, a Hewlett Packet Enterprise Company. Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is my career in data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we're joined by Kevin Cole, the Director of Product and Technical Marketing at Zerto, a Hewlett Packard Enterprise Company. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Kevin, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. I'm happy to be here. So excited for you to be here and hear about your journey here. So, okay, so tell me, you're the Director of Product and Technical Marketing at Zerto an HPE company. So tell me what type of business is Zerto? So Zerto is data protection. So we're focused on disaster recovery, ransomware resilience, and multi-cloud mobility. And what that really means in simple terms is we help companies keep running after any kind of disruption. So think about a ransomware attack, hurricane, hardware failure, anything like that, that's going to disrupt their business. We help them get back up and running very quickly. Oh, very cool. Um, So as the director of product and technical marketing, what's your typical week look like? Well, the cliche answer, of course, is going to depend um, quite extensively. Um, I'll give you an example right now of what my week looks like, and we can think about whether it's typical or not. But it's a lot of focus on creating and evangelizing our story and what we can do for customers. So for example, right now we're focused on a couple product launches. We have a major event coming up in June called HP Discover. That is HP's flagship event. So of course there's a lot of prep and work for that. And then other than that, on the day-to-day basis, you might be uh, ping-ponging between writing something very, very tactical, or maybe it's a little more high level strategic around building a a narrative for the market, understanding latest market trends, trying to distill down how we can best solve problems for organizations uh, really all over the world. Very nice. So so tell me, Kevin, is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? Let's say you're six years old. What did you want to be? Okay. At six years old, I would probably say cartoonist. Whoa, I love that. So That's I think the first I, time. Yeah. I'm very far maybe from doing that. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you that I'm doing I'm doing something totally different than I ever thought I would do. Um, in the one sense, I'm not surprised about where my career has taken me, in the sense that I was always really into computers and technology, and I've landed at one of the largest tech companies in the world. Um, so I think uh, younger me would be very excited about that. On the other hand, I don't think product marketing, technical marketing was anything on my radar um, at all. Certainly, I didn't know anything about data protection. I actually went to school for philosophy. I thought I was going to be a professor at yeah. some you know, university somewhere teaching philosophy. And life has had other plans. And I'm completely happy with that. That's just how these things sort of go sometimes. Absolutely. Okay. So tell me, so how did you go from wanting to be a cartoonist to like, to majoring in philosophy? What made you to, you see, you want to be a professor, but was this just a passion? This is specifically something you wanted to teach or? It is. I just, um, hard to explain. I just got very interested in, you know, the so-called big questions and wondered, you know, about our place in the world and how we got here and where we're going and How do you live a good life? And some of those very, very old questions that feel very um, maybe abstract sometimes. So I was always very interested in maybe uh, 
the more pragmatic side of philosophy and how that impacts politics and society and the way we structure and live our lives and all that sort of stuff. And I don't know totally if that, you know, what lens that applies to my day-to-day -day life. It has helped me enormously, I think in an abstract sense, to think well and to think critically and try to apply that uh, to my work. It has helped me write and structure my writing and my presenting skills and um, I'm very grateful to that background. Again, I don't know, on a, you know, I'm not using that degree to some extent anymore, but I'm sure. still, I have no regrets about pursuing that. Well, tell me then, um, so where did you go from there? So you've got this degree in philosophy. So, so where, where did your career journey start taking you? So I think in some sense, um, uh, yeah, a little bit unconventional path, but I really started out focused, focusing my career on enablement. And that was enablement of external audiences, internal audiences. And what I found over time is that I was not just building training. I was not just building enablement assets with other people's messaging and language. I started creating it myself. And I got very interested in, in how we talk about what we do as a company. And it wasn't necessarily my current company, but dating back, you know, how do people describe the work they do and why customers should be interested, why partners should be interested? So over time, I, the line started to blur. I think there's a very close relationship for me between enablement and marketing, particularly product marketing. So as those lines started blurring, eventually just realize, okay, most of my time is actually not being spent on enablement. Uh, it's being spent on product marketing. Let's just make that official. And, and maybe that's when I officially moved over, uh, starting with technical marketing, again, some of the, the geeky background, and then broadening to product marketing more generally. So, so how did you make that move? So where were you working and and where did you decide it was it all within the same company or did you switch companies? Um, it started probably uh, a couple jobs prior. It really took on a life of its own when I got to Zerto. Mm -hmm. uh, we were acquired by HB in 2021, but I got to Zerto in 2015. And so mm -hmm. it was just a slow process, I would say, um, mm -hmm. over time. I think how I got there is really probably down to mentors and leaders who really helped helped my career, helped me learn a lot. Uh, folks that even maybe were not directly managing me or anything like that, just learning from them and building your skills and trying to absorb as much as I could to to further my skills and figure out how I wanted to evolve uh, my career and then you know, having, you know, being prepared to take that step eventually of, okay, I'm going to really jump into this instead yeah. of this being a part-time thing as a, as a side project, I'm going to pursue this uh, all the way. Amazing. So, um, so, so what is your biggest lesson so far in your career? It's a tough one because I, I can think of lots of lessons I've learned. Um, I think for me, maybe it comes down to a couple of things. So first one I'll share is probably just learning and trying to be passionate about continuing to develop your skills and and not just in a, you know, I'm in a tech company, but it's not just about learning the tech. It's about yeah. learning the business that you're in and understanding all facets of your business. And I have tried to think, even in a very large company, try to think like a small business owner. It's your responsibility to understand all facets of what's going on. And certainly my job is not in accounting. My job is not in sales. But the more you can understand about everything that's going on mm -hmm. in the business that you're in, I think the better off you'll be uh, just being that sponge of how much can I take in? Okay, maybe it's too much. I'll, I'll set it aside, come back another day, learn more. But over time, you you really start to get some momentum um, in certain areas. And uh, yeah, I, had a, I, I had a second yeah. lesson and I, now I can't remember. <laughs> I think that's a great lesson. I, I have certainly used that in my career as well. Um, and it has 
been very, very helpful. I, I think that's such great, a uh, great lesson. And, and, um, I think and there's no downside, to... right? Like there's no right. downside to continuing to learn. And maybe it's not the kind of thing that you put into practice tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, not everything we learn is a hundred percent applicable on a day-to-day -day basis, but over time you'll see, okay, well, that's rounded out my knowledge here or there, you know, uh, you know, you'll find later on, you can pull things out and you're, oh, hey, that was something I learned years ago, but now it's very relevant. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I actually learned Excel from Microsoft accountants, which is what, nice. who it was built for, right? <laughs> so very similar very, to me, yeah. Yeah, just because I was willing to work with them and help them, you know, and with what we needed and, and it was great, yeah. Yeah. Um, certainly a skill I use today. <laughs> With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. So, you know, do you see, um, so tell me, you know, it's, especially working in, you know, uh, more of a security uh, angle, you know, what is your definition of data? It's a good one. I think of data really as the language we have for a really hyper-connected age. Language is the way so many companies right now are creating value, delivering value. I think after people, um, it is probably the most valuable asset any organization can have. And you see that reflected everywhere. And so my particular niche of the industry is data protection. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's integral to data management and the data world more broadly. If your data is not readily accessible, protected, um, safe from you know all sorts of threats or disruptions, the, the impact of the business can be enormous. And so that's the... That's the connection to what we're doing in data protection, I think, to the larger uh, world of data. And I love that you mentioned that humans are the most important asset for a company because you're, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my, my focus, right, on a day-to-day -day basis can get very technical. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean much without the people all around us. Um, the The technology, I think, I try to bring as much as I can a, a sort of humanistic lens to it. And, you know, the the people, whether it's in our company or customers, partners, um, whomever it is, that's who's who's most essential, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? I guess I would be hard pressed to imagine it decreasing. Um, I think the explosion of data is something really a lot of companies are still grappling with. Uh, we've been talking recently about a data deluge, particularly with AI, particularly with data science, big data, all this stuff. The, the need for skilled people who understand this world can make sense of it, um, can speak competently, intelligently, and translate the tech into real world outcomes. I mean, it's hard to see that going away. I know there's a lot of um, concern and chatter about AI replacing jobs and all that. I I'm still very optimistic. I don't see the, the robots kicking us out entirely. Um, and I very much think that this is a career path that if anybody is not in it, but thinking about it, Absolutely. The the opportunity is huge. The landscape is so broad. I know on this podcast, for example, you've had people on from a wide variety of disciplines, if you will, right? And I mm -hmm. hope maybe folks just starting out in their career can get a sense of the the full breadth of what's available to them. Again, if you go back to, you know, we were talking about when I was younger, right? When I was in middle school, high school, I don't think I had any conception of the the all the types of work that goes on and to make the world run, of course. And so I think your podcast is interesting for highlighting all the different disciplines, 
facets, ways to, to get engaged. If you want to have a data centric career, it's not just one single path. There's lots of ways to, to pursue there. I so agree. And, you know, and, and it's, you know, the commonality that I hear in this podcast is following your passion. So you have this passion for technology and how to make it work and, and, um, and how you followed that. Um, and it, yeah, it's just amazing because you, you can marry a career in data with any passion. Um, and because every company uses it, every company needs somebody to help manage it. <laughs> so yeah, it can be used for a lot of diff good things. So what advice then would you give to people who are looking to get into a career in data management? So it's interesting you actually mentioned the word passion. Um, I think being passionate about what you do is good. But to some extent, I do see some people maybe over rotate that on a little bit and they think, well, do I wake up in the morning and, and I'm passionate about data management? Maybe, maybe not. I think when I talk to folks that are newer in their careers, I really try to push them to think about not just what they're passionate about, but just what are you good at? What will people pay you to do? And what's going to have an impact in the world? And if you purely think into what am I, what am I passionate about? Most people gravitate toward hobbies and side projects and things like that. And they think, well, how will I build a career out of it, out of that? Again, I don't know that I ever woke up one day and said, look, data protection, <laughs> data recovery is like the one thing in the world I'm most excited about. But I think that's okay. It's about pursuing the things that you're interested in that keep you sharp, that challenge you, push you. Um, if you're in a job that's not doing that, agree, that's where some of the passion kind of leaves and you, you feel like you're just clocking in, clocking out. You don't really have much interest in what you're doing. But I guess for me, it's thinking beyond passion about what can I do? What can I contribute? Am I adding value to this organization, to the team? Uh, if not, maybe it's time to move on. If I am, if I'm challenged, I'm excited about what I'm doing, I think that'll get you far uh, in your career. Yeah, you know, I, I would agree with that. You know, we talk a lot about it within our internally here as a company, you know, it's, we're always going to have aspects of our job we don't like, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, there's, but if yeah, as a whole, you're loving what you're doing and, you know, it's, it's always so fun. And as a small company, as we grow, we get to hand off those things that we don't like so much, right? Yeah. You know, and because somebody will like to do it, right? Um, Somebody will enjoy doing something as an individual you don't like to do. I think finding, trying to do your best to explore different things and find mm -hmm. what you like doing yeah. and not getting caught in a trap of what you think uh, ahead of time you might like doing or what you think others want you to be doing yeah. um, and sort of pursuing there and marrying your interests and skills that's going to link up your personality, your passions, your idiosyncrasies, all of the quirks and the weird things that make you who you are and make you wonderful. How do you link that to what you're doing at work? And maybe the things that you even find peculiar about yourself, you can capitalize on in a career um, and go far with it. it. It sounds maybe cliche, but I think that's a, a track people have to pursue. Yeah, I agree. Following your passion doesn't mean you're having fun every single minute of the day. <laughs> Yeah. there's got to be some challenges. Like you say, there's got to be some hard times and so you can push yourself and so you can grow. Cause if you don't, if you're not growing, then you're right. It just becomes stale and not so fun after a while. I think so. when you're doing that growing, I think you asked earlier around advice for others for this mm -hmm. um, career. I think one of the biggest things is as you're doing that learning and that exploration, you're getting better, you're building years of experience being the driver of your own career. I, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who don't fully know kind of what they want, where they really want to be headed. And I think that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. I've certainly taken detours, zigzags, weird sort of choices. But even amidst all that, I think you have to be driving your career because nobody else is going to do it for you. People will help you. People, right. uh, networking is powerful. People will mentor you, give you a leg up. Absolutely. 
but you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And I'll share you a story actually about my first uh, or my current boss. Uh, I first went to her, I think five or six years ago and said, I want to work for you. I want to do X. And she said, no, she said, no, I'm not interested. So then I came back later and said, I want to do this. I think this is how I can help. You know, here's the scope of the role. Here's how I can contribute. And she said, yes, but, and she modified it. And she said, yes, we're going to run with this. I'm not going to, you know, buy into everything you described. And then over time, that evolves, right? But it, you have to be willing to put yourself out there and be, be okay hearing no and be patient enough to say, I'm going to keep pushing for what I want to do, for where I know I can add value and deliver results and may not be a yes this month, this year even. Uh, but over time, try to put yourself in positions uh, to get lucky, really. <laughs> Use hard work to get yeah. lucky. Is how I think about it. Well, I love that story. And uh, it talks to very much how you figured out what you wanted and kept going after it in a way that was positive and, and, uh, and made it happen. So that's very, very cool. Um, and I don't think we allow ourselves that freedom as much to say, hey, here's what I want and here's how I can, but you also made it not just about what you wanted. It was how, here's how I can contribute. Here's how I can make uh, a difference in the company, uh, an improved difference. And and that's- uh, I think people big. are hesitant because it's a degree of vulnerability, right? Where you're saying, right. and especially if you're someone who doesn't like to talk about yourself, if you don't like to toot your own horn, it can be hard to say, Hey, I think I can do this and I can do it well. Right. And everybody's going to benefit by me leaning on these strengths for a certain kind of person. And I, I very much relate to that. That's a hard thing to do, but you have to get comfortable doing that. And you have to get yeah. comfortable with the, uh, with some of the tension and the, the uncomfortableness of it. You have to be okay with that in order to progress forward. And exactly what, like you're saying, it's not purely a, self-interested thing it's we as a company we mm -hmm. as a group or a team you know we're going to benefit and it doesn't really matter what kind of industry what type of customer you're serving um, right. if others are going to benefit from that you know you're going to find people that want to get on board with what you're trying to achieve yeah absolutely um i often advise people uh you know you, you certainly will not achieve if you don't ask, you won't get it. If you don't ask, <laughs> yeah. that's guaranteed. But if you ask, then maybe there's, there's a possibility of yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this. Um, so Kevin, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, if people wanted to learn more about Zerto, how would they find you and find the company? Yeah, so two great ways, uh, because we are an acquired company right now, we have two website websites, which is excellent. You can go to zerto.com or you can go to hpe.com and you'll find a, a wealth of resources there. And in particular, I would recommend folks check out the free hands-on labs we have through zerto.com. You know, we were talking about learning and growth. I mean, a hands-on mm -hmm. experience, best way to do some of that. And so folks can get on, they can try out our software, see what we're all about. And you do it in a safe space. If you mess up, things go haywire. It's totally fine. It's just a, a live you know, environment, sandbox sort of environment. It's no harm, no foul. And so that's how you can poke around. I learned a lot through those, uh, the ability mm -hmm. to make mistakes and mess up and generate errors and then start over. So that's how folks can get involved. I mentioned HP Discover. It's a great conference in Las Vegas. And mm -hmm. if you've ever been to Vegas, you know the big sphere that's there. So the keynote this year is in the sphere. Uh, we're going to have a great party there, a great keynote. So I highly encourage folks to check that out. Um, it's going to be a really good event. Nice. Um, amazing. So Kevin, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with us today. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. And for all our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. 
Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.